Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining this Payments Unpack webinar. Um, in today, we're going to spend just a few minutes unpacking requests to pay. And in this webinar today, uh, I haven't scripted it. It's the first time on the new platform, on a contrast platform. So if I'm honest, anything could happen. But let's see what exactly is going to happen over the first few next few minutes as we unpack request to pay. You can see on the screen today that Peter Cornfall from Answer Pay has joined me. Some of you, I guess, will know Peter, others won't. So, Peter, thank you. Firstly, thank you so much for joining uh, me this afternoon. But just introduce yourself so folk know who they're speaking to. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much for, for having me today. Um, so, yeah, so I'm Peter Cornforth. I've been in the payment payments industry for about 15 years. Um, always very fun projects. Started off with Vodafone and PESA out in East Africa. Um, been in open banking for about five or six years directly before joining Answer Pay to do request to pay. And if I may, just a little, little bit on Answer Pay too. So what we're about is actually solving that problem of those uh, fraud text messages and emails that cause authorised push payment fraud. So we're working with retail banks and payment providers to offer them an alternative where they can help their customers avoid that fraud, save themselves the cost of paying out for fraud, but also help consumers with uh, the cost of living crisis. Fantastic, Peter. Thank you so much. And it's great to be on here uh, the, this afternoon. And uh, full disclosure, I'm also the chairman of Answer Pay. So it's uh, really good that Peter said he'd come and join us today. You know, whether you know, depending on how much you know about Request to Pay, how much Peter's just said to you, you know, Request to Pay has two sides, doesn't it? The first is it's a service, it's a service that allows a biller to initiate a payment request. And secondly, it empowers consumers to choose who they pay, when they pay and how they pay. And as we unpack request to pay this afternoon, we need to think about this subject from both the side of the biller as well as the consumer as well. As we go through the session today, it's likely you're going to have some questions. Um, you'll see on your screen there's a chat function, ask you to type your question in the chat function. And probably at the end, uh, we'll, we'll get round to those questions. Uh, I'm sure you'll be kind to Peter, but he'd love to unpack some of those questions that you might have. So let's get into it, Peter. You know, you've only got one job today to do today, mm -hmm. and that job is to unpack request to pay. And often we we say request to pay in its short form of RTP. As bankers, as payments people, we're used to three-letter acronyms. So let's take that three-letter acronym and ask you just to bring the concept to life for us. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Mike. And RTP is a particularly unhelpful one, given that real-time payments also exists in the market as well. So uh, what we mean by request to pay is effectively it's a, a digital process um, where one party can ask another for a payment. And that's, that's as simple as it gets, really. Um, now, with that, you can actually cover many different use cases. So there are, for example, B2C, where a, a utility company might be wanting to collect payment, for example. Uh, there's uh, B2B transactions where maybe a supplier wants to receive um, a payment from the, the, the small businesses that it serves. Uh, and of course, there's also person to person um, aspects of request to pay as well. But I think there's effectively three key elements that I would think kind of help define what a request to pay solution is. I think the first is there's an element of ID validation in there. So with any request to pay system, it, it, you know who the originator of that message is. And that's really, really important because there are, as I say, there's SMS and email based services out there. We're actually from a consumer or from a recipient point of view, you can't actually tell whether those messages are real or not. Are they coming from that person? Is that person, the, you know, are they who they say they are or, or not? You can't tell. So with any request to pay systems, an element of ID validation. The second bit is app to app. So end to end security is part of that. And it's closed loop. So you're not going to get unsolicited messages. Plus, if there are any bad actors on the request pay ecosystem, you can kick them off. And it's very hard to, uh, for them to get started again. Um, also, there's the element of flexibility. And this is really a key point with request to pay that, that differentiates it from perhaps other payment options that are out there. That it's very much a push payment based uh, mechanism. So you can have a, a biller ask you for a payment and you as the recipient of that request, you choose when you want that money to leave your account. You push the payment to that merchant um, when you want to. Um, and that's very different to things like direct debit, for example, where it's much more of a merchant pull type process. So I think they're probably the three key elements which would help define a request to pay service. 
Brilliant. It's really great when you unpack these things and bring it to life. And um, often when we talk about request to pay, Peter, you use a phrase, you talk about the ecosystem and the many players uh, in, in that transmission of an instruction or a request and the payment itself. But as you talk about that ecosystem, you've often used a phrase around that we call a chicken and egg. There's a particular conundrum to solve to ensure that we got traction with request to pay, particularly here in the UK. I, I wonder if you could perhaps just uh, drill down a little bit on that chicken and egg uh, challenge you faced and how you might have resolved that. Yeah, great, thank you. So um, building a network is hard uh, and that's effectively what we're talking about that chicken and egg. Um, what I'm pleased to say is that we're, we're fully vegan friendly now. There are no chickens or eggs involved with uh, our request to pay solution because what we've done is we've turned that two-sided marketplace into a one-sided marketplace. Now, two-sided is hard because actually uh, a billers don't want to join when there's no payers on board. Payers don't want to join when there's no billers on board. So we've cracked that and turned it into a, a one-sided marketplace. And the way we've done that is we're focusing very heavily on retail banks, um, digital wallets, uh, uh, mobile apps that are really payer focused. We've actually um, given full coverage of that biller side. So we focus on the retail banks and offer them a service by actually offering that full coverage of the biller marketplace. And the way we do that is we've got direct access, we've got uh, integration via cloud accountancy packages, we're also working with our colleagues at Partner Hub to do invoice data, um, it, it, ingest, uh, ingesting that and turning that into request to pay messages as well. And just to give you a, a real example of that, and if I can share this in chat, perhaps one to, to watch later, but we've actually recently uh, completed the integration with British Gas. So you can see with this video I've just linked in chat, uh, a real example of us fetching in a British Gas bill, uh, just happens to be my British Gas bill, as uh, so you can see how expensive my, my winter bill payment was, uh, but gives you an idea of, of actually the, the coverage that we've now got, um, where we're able to cover perhaps one of the, the foremost billers in the UK. Thank you. And uh, I love the phrase about being fully vegan friendly. Um, my friend Lucy would love to see a, a vegan friendly payments product. So really good to, to hear that. But thank you for that. But you've talked about request to pay in the concept of an ecosystem. But obviously, mm. request to pay fits within the, a portfolio of payment products. And uh, for those folk who would know me, know that I used to be CEO of the UK's direct debit scheme. Uh, we talk about variable recurring payments a lot at the moment um, in the UK in the context of open banking and the JROC report. Package that together with me. How, how does request to pay fit in that sort of collection or receivables type scenario? Yeah, and so it's a really great question because I think um, in the payments world, we get very caught up with our own products and our own service. But ultimately, you know, um, consumers won't um, recognize request to pay as request to pay. You know, I think that 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 what we call it is going to be something very different to what consumers end up calling it when they use it. Same as with open banking, the success of, of, of open banking will be actually when consumers don't know they're using open banking, it's just the, the easiest way for them to make the payment. So very similar with request to pay. And I think there's, you know, with that kind of that, that open banking element, there's clearly variable recurring payments are on the horizon. Um, they're really exciting. Um, they've got the ability to have the uh, increased security of say a card on file, um, but also they've got the added flexibility over something like a direct debit. So you've got the same recurring payment mechanism, but you've kind of got that ability to kind of um, you know, improve upon the existing services. One of the biggest things about VRP though, which I'm really excited about, is that interoperability point. Because actually direct debits, you know, they work very well for a lot of people, but they are very static. You kind of set and forget. What they're not very good at is actually how do you offload from a direct debit to a to a potentially another payment method. I think that becomes really exciting with VRP, where, for example, you can interchange between a VRP and a request to pay seamlessly. Um, the really great example of this is a classic one, but it's the, the gym subscription, where maybe you sign up for the starter package on the gym subscription. You do that with request to pay because you want the control of authorizing each and every transaction until you're comfortable with the um, with that that product, that service that you're buying. Perhaps you've now taken to the gym, but you don't like um, you don't like, like having to authorize the transaction every time. So maybe you toggle a switch and you flip across to, to a variable recurring payment, a VRP. So actually that happens seamlessly in the background. But look, maybe you fall out of love with it again and you actually want to go a bit more as pay as you go. So again, you can come back to request to pay. 
And I think for consumers, I think that's that's the really exciting bit is actually how you can interoperate between these different ones where actually you, you can automate the payments or you can have more control over payments. And I think, you know, forgetting the the, 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 the kind of what we call them and actually how it's, it's all about how consumers use them. Well, we need to be as flexible as consumers want to be with their particular payments. And I think the interchange between those are quite exciting. Okay, thank you for that, Peter. We, we've talked about the ecosystem. We've talked about the fit of request to pay in the context of other payment types like direct debit and the BRP. Tell me, is this just a sterling thing? Is this just a UK thing or is stuff happening elsewhere? Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it really is a, a, a global um, initiative. Um, we've seen Australia already massively successful. Um, India is part of the, the UPI uh, protocol there. Uh, UPI Collect, I think it's called. So there's 100 million customers using it there. Uh, there's not one, but soon to be two schemes in the US as well. So very exciting progress there. But continental Europe is is absolutely fascinating at the moment. And in many ways, they're, they're racing ahead of, of where we're at at the UK. Um, and I think part of this is um, due to the separate instant mandate. So we've been very lucky here in the UK that, um, you know, instant payments have been around a fair while. Whereas actually in continental Europe, I think there's been a bit of a, uh, a, a delay in terms of the availability of, of SEP, for instance, and the European Commission wants to change that. But what that's also done is spurred on the additional overlay, such as request to pay, in terms of how that fits in, uh, in, into the overall payments ecosystem. And we're very excited to play a role in that, um, so much so that we've recently actually become an advisor to Berlin Group on their open finance initiative. So that's a really important element of um, setting the standards for interoperability of request to pay services in continental Europe. And that's uh, something we're, we're, we're very excited about. Thank you for covering that, Peter. I was just about to ask you, OK, you told me about a geographic, you told me about Europe, you told me about the rest of the world, our answer pay playing in that space. But I think you've covered that very, uh, very cleverly. And also the fact that, you know, as answer pay, you're able to influence what's going on in the continent of Europe. Do you know, you can't have uh, a webinar at the moment without talking about open banking and VRPs. Mm. And the third of those things is fraud. Now, mm. we all know the eye-watering levels of fraud that we see here in the UK. We know that authorised push payments fraud is an absolute issue that many people are trying to, to, to crack. As, as, request of, as an open question, I guess, Peter, has request to pay got a part to play in thwarting the fraudster? hundred uh, percent. And, and, and I think the, the challenge is that, you know, there are no silver bullets to this particular problem. I think there are going to be many um, uh, things that will actually help bring this number down. I think to be clear, though, there are definitely things that, that don't help. And what those is actually send out messages and, and emails with payment links in them, which convince customers that it's normal to receive a payment request on a text message or an email. Look, banks know these channels aren't safe, so they shouldn't be using them. I think that's uh, something that, that I hope the regulator will, will take action on, as they have done in other markets, such as Singapore. Um, and I mean, that's a really great example because where in Singapore they've banned the use of uh, banks using um, email and SMS for clickable links, what they've advocated it's, it instead is this app to app payments. Um, so again, from a corporate bank app, you, um, as a biller, you could make a, a request to pay and that message be received in the consumer bank app um, for the consumer to, to interact with. And again, this comes back to that idea I said at the very beginning in terms of what is request to pay. It's that two-way messaging process between those secure applications where you know the identity of that biller. And that's really important with authorised push payment frauds because how many times have we received one of those messages from HMRC or the post office? Actually, it isn't them. It's a fraudster trying to impersonate them. Remember, these guys, these fraudsters, it's a percentages game. So they will target big brands and they will send out hundreds, if not thousands of these messages trying to get a small percentage of those customers clicking on those links. So the more we can work with those big brands to cut off that avenue, such as we're doing with British Gas, I think that, you know, we can really help uh, alleviate that fraud problem. Thank you. As I said, you can't have a conversation with anybody without thinking about fraud and APP. And it's great to hear that Request to Pay has got a space in to, to uh, a contribution to make in that space. So thank you for that. Um, I think that we we talked about a few things that we'd, we'd covered today, Peter. I think we're, we're pretty much there. In terms of making contact with you and finding out more about AnswerPay, where could we find out more? 
Sure. Well, first of all, there's the website, so www.answerpay.uk, or of course you can reach out to me, and it's peter.cornforth at answerpay.uk. Uh, very happy to, to to kind of receive any any feedback, any questions. Okay. So um, either either via LinkedIn for you or the web answerpay.uk for uh, answerpay and to find what's happening there. Peter, thank you so much for sharing with us uh, today um, and uh, covering these questions so so well. So appreciate your time. For those that joined uh, the webinar today, thank you for for coming along today. For those that listen to it on replay or some of the excerpts, um, it, I hope you enjoy what you listen to and what you see. Um, do subscribe to my newsletter for free. It's you can find it at payments-unpack.com. You can see a link in the chat. Uh, subscribe to the newsletter to find out more about what's going on. You'll find my podcast on Spotify. Just search Payments Unpacked on Spotify and on YouTube by searching Payments Unpacked and you'll find our video channel as well. So thank you so much for joining today and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Thank you.